Wade showed his strength and took the number one card of Victory Lane one race ago. Can the Season 1 champion head to the Super Speedway and make it back-to-back? -back? Stephen Willey won this racetrack a season ago after his dismal season. Can he finally find some success once again? And Super Speedways have not been kind to a number of drivers so far this year. Will we see several accidents today, and how violent can they get? six races left in the regular season, we head to a track that might be familiar to some of our veteran drivers. Bump Draft in Super Speedway was the first race ever held in the NFRN Elite Cup Series. Now this could be a great opportunity for some of those that haven't gotten a victory yet to find their way in today. We're down here in Jupiter, Florida for the Bump Draft in 400. Hello again everybody, Colin Denton here on the call today for RBN. As we just mentioned, Bump Draft in Super Speedway was the host of our first race in the NFRN. And now we go back to it in Season 2, a little bit later in the season, 10 races to be exact. But for veteran drivers looking for Victory Lane to get a spot in the playoffs, this could be their great opportunity. Stephen Willey was the winner of that first event, and obviously this season has been a complete disaster for him. Now, going to Victory Lane today, it might be hard for him to find his way into the playoffs considering the standing cutoff he needs and the amount of points that he's back. But... That could be a big confidence booster if he's able to get it today. Noah Cars, he won the Clash earlier this year, but he has yet to win a points-paying race and hasn't found his way into the playoffs. Could this be an opportunity for him as we head back to another Super Speedway? All of these guys are looking for their victory today, and on a Super Speedway, anything can happen, and anyone can find their way into the playoffs. We take a little aerial tour between Texas and Florida. That's where you'll find the city of Jupiter, the site of our 11th race of the season and home to Bump Draft and Super Speedway, the city of just over 55,000 people, about 80 miles north of Miami. The city also home to the Palm Beach International Raceway Road Course, as well as the Miami Marlins and St. Louis Cardinals Spring Training Facilities. Let's take a lap around Bump Draft and Super Speedway with our Toyota Test Car, a very uniquely shaped racetrack. Uh, the front and the back stretch are not exactly the same. The back stretch is more of a D-shaped uh, trioval, while the front stretch, kind of like something you'd see at Atlanta or Charlotte, even though it's in a Super Speedway format. We're on the back stretch right now, as you can see, making the long sweeping turn, heading into turn number three grandstands on both the front and the back stretch and this group is about three or four cars wide a lot of room for drivers to navigate and try to find the best drafting lane so that they can get to the front the fastest and then right here we head back to the front stretch you can see a quick little turn a straightaway and then another quick turn and that is a lap around bump draft and super speedway the Amateur Cup Series drivers took back to the track to see who would qualify for this race. Race winner Kyle Wall is not in the top 14 in standings, not part of this field. You can see they quickly clumped together into a pack, but that would lead to some problems. John Gilbert going around after a little bit of contact from, I believe, Jacob Rose. Gilbert would save it, but would have finished in the back of the field. They would take the caution flag back to the line. Craig Martin would be the first one to get there. And he would be the winner of this heat at Bump Drafted. Also qualifying for the race, we will see Kenny Knox, AJ Jones, Chris Farley, Robert Harrison, and Jacob Rose make the race. I believe this is Jacob Rose's first career start as well as AJ Jones's. John Gilbert, who was the pole sitter and runner up of the last race at Van Zant, is going to finish 14th in this one. And let's give some props to our hot seat driver of the week, Johnny Gardner, once again taking that title. Coming off of two top two finishes in a row, he finishes ninth at Van Zant, which means he'll be wearing the cockpit cam once again. We'll get to see his angle as he navigates this super speedway in a large pack and a lot of traffic. Going to be an exciting one to watch, and we want to get there as quickly as possible. Let's send it down trackside and get the command to start the engines. Ladies and gentlemen, now for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome Tony George. Drivers, start your engines! 
Six races left in the regular season. This is the time to lock down a victory. Let's take you through the starting grid, see where everyone's going to stack up today. We've got two winners on the front row. William Brock in the number 23 Gran Turismo Toyota starts on the pole today. He won at Riki Raceway. Amethyst Astley, the Pix Cliff winner in the number 57 Tabasco Chevrolet, starts on the outside pole. Eric Monaco grabbed a top 10 at 8 pole, which means he could run pretty decent at the Super Speedway. Zachary Fitzwater Sr. led final practice. They start on row number 2. In row number 3, we have the Columbia runner-up, NASCAR Fan 19, rounding out the top 5. The other JR, two top 10s this season, looking for a third in place number 6. David Davidson starts where he finished off at Van Zandt, 7th place. Kenny Knox, the Mirage winner, starts right next to him. Three out of the last four finishes for Bruno De Barros has been 11th or 13th. He's looking to get into the top 10. He starts there, 9th place. Rampage, the Van Zandt winner and the first practice leader. He rounds out the top 10. Chris Harley earned his first Elite Cup Series top 10 at Van Zandt. He starts place number 11. Noah Cars has a best super speedway finish of 8th twice in his career. But remember, he won the clash at Columbia looking to get to victory lane from 12th place. Our Columbia winner, Julio Caesar, starts in place number 13. Alongside him, Eli Bright won top 10 on the season. Nick Smith currently working off back-to-back -to -back top 10s from the 15th spot. Brad Stover, the current points leader, to his outside. In row number nine, we have Johnny Gardner, the Calder Park winner. Alongside him, Gerardo Ron, a best finish of 16th place besides his runner-up finish at Green Valley Super Speed Ring need some more consistency. And in our 10th row, we have Rambo, who's currently on a three-race top 10 streak, and he's alongside Jonathan Reigns, who finished his eighth at Pig's Cliff earlier this season. As you see the back half of the starting order across your screen, we also see the drivers and cars start to make circuits around this track, a little over two and a half miles long. As we mentioned in our test car segment. It is a very unique shape. It's going to provide a lot of challenges for these drivers that they're going to have to have their cars tuned in for all types of situations. Obviously you can start from anywhere on this circuit and possibly find your way up to the front. But of course being up there right now is going to be a good start for drivers like Brock and Ashley, both who've already won this season. Looking for a second one, though, to help them along their way. Brock is the 11th pole winner we've had this season, across all 11 races. So he'll join the Clash field next season, as long as he is participating in the series. But for now, we are racing here at Bump Draft, and the pace car is off the track. Field comes to the start-finish line. The green flag flies at the Bump Draft in 400. as they come through the front stretch. David Davidson is going to be the first lap leader for this 40-lap race. And he's got a full-timer and a part-timer on his inside now. Chris Harley looking to go to the inside and take the lead outright. As they're still four wide, several rows deep. Already up to 200 miles per hour on the second lap of this race. Johnny Gardner now making the push to the inside. We saw him on the inside line. He got a great boost to Nick Smith as they find that they found that inside line early. And now the sixth car up to the front. Gardner the winner at Calder Park. Looking for his second victory of the season. Obviously Rampage got his third career win 
last race at Van Zandt. Gardner could be the next one to pull that off. He also had a se he also had a season one victory. Oh, and there's trouble in the back of the field. Brad Stover, the points leader, up and over. Amethyst Ashley also up in the air. Both of the checkmate motors for cars. There's more trouble down the racetrack. And another car over. That's David Davidson. And Rampage is involved in this one. As more cars starting to come through the inside line and continue plowing into the accident. One of the best drivers on this type of track in our last race winner at Van Zant. Rampage involved in this one. And got some pretty significant damage to his race car. Nick Smith, heavy front end damage. Stuart Graden also involved in the accident further down the track. Both of the Checkmate Motorsport cars involved in the first accident. Stephen Willie smoking. Jonathan Rains, they were both involved in an accident at Van Zant. In fact, ran into each other. And I believe Willie got into the 77 car. Chris Harley had some problems there. As he limps his car back to pit lane, we see the rest of the field. They are coming down for pit stops. John Arndt, the first one to come down. No one staying out at the moment. Robert Harrison, top running Toyota at the moment. We're looking for pit road issues, as we saw a lot of those in the Amateur Cup Series race. Although at the moment, it looks like it's a pretty clean stop for the field. Cars are getting on and off pretty smoothly. And it looks like Robert Harrison got a great jump. And he's going to pick up a lot of positions, while John Arndt will not win the race off pit road. And it's going to be two tire stops all across the board for this one, just like we saw on the first stop and the second stop from the Amateur Cup Series race. You can see Robert Harrison jumped eight spots in that one. Jacob Rose jumps 19 spots. He's all the way down, down there in ninth, but a big track position boost early in this one. So we take a look at the first incident. Looking like a five-wide situation, and Gerard Aron might be pushing the issue there with Craig Martin, and Brad Stover's on the outside. The last thing he needed was a bad day. He just needs to stay consistent and keep himself up there in the points lead. He look, looks like he's going to be out of this race early. And he goes over for a flip. Amethyst Ashley was also airborne. Comes back down on all four tires. Noah Cars, Gerardo Ron, Rambo all involved in this one. 76 hits the 55. Philip Fry is going to get into it. And the contact made by the set, by the 55 and 78 to the 77 looks like that pushes Stephen Willey. Or pushes Reigns into Stephen Willey. And that's going to involve both of those teammates. And Willey, last, last season's winner of this race, is not going to be able to defend it. As his tumultuous season continues on. Go on board, Brad Stover. And also from Stephen Willey. Breaks really well there to avoid Noah Cars, and he looks like he's going to get through it until the 77 comes up in front of him. And it gives his teammate a heavy shot. Then you can see the smoke further down the racetrack. Let's take a look at how this happened. And a little bit more toward the front of the field, and it looks like Aiden Shepard actually tags the wall. Johnny Gardner just behind him. Obviously, running full speed doesn't anticipate the 7 to hit the wall. Runs into him. They come down the racetrack into the traffic. Hits Nick Smith and Rampage gets bumped from there. And that just completely accordions this entire field. Eli Bright gets spun out. Bruno De Barros. Chris Harley and David Davidson make contact. 
Looks like Rampage is almost going to save that, but it looks like Harley coming back down the racetrack is going to turn the one car up toward the wall. His teammate NASCAR Fan 19 also sliding into this one. Zachary Fitzwater Sr. gets clipped. He's going to hit the wall. Stuart Gratton gets hit by DeBarros. Both of those cars will hit Kenny Knox and A.J. Jones. There's Davidson getting over after it looks like contact from Eric Monaco. Caleb Campbell also involved in this one. Oh, heavy hit by DeBarros into the outside wall. Now, I don't believe this one is over either. I think that they're going to slide down the racetrack and get hit by a few more drivers that thought taking the inside line with a, a lot of speed was going to help them get through this one. Here comes Reese Butcher. He hits Davidson. Mitchell Mark runs into him as well. And the 42 is going to run into the back of the 76. So a lot of problems on this on these opening laps. Here's from our hot seat driver, Johnny Gardner. You can see how he had no reaction time there, but he was able to essentially get away from that one. Onboard rampage. Big trouble on the early stages. A lot of drivers going to get taken out in this one. Robert Harrison is going to be the one that leads them back to the green. Sunday is race day. That's why the Domino's 555 deal is perfect. Three medium pizzas, just five bucks each. I've got three pizzas here for uh, Mr. NASCAR. That's mine. You're right. Mine would be for the king of NASCAR. Really? Mine would be for the um, emperor of NASCAR. Mine would be for the czar of NASCAR. The grand poobah of NASCAR. Generalissimo of NASCAR. El Presidente de NASCAR. King Daddy. This race day, get your 555 deal from Domino's. Buy three or more medium one-topping pizzas, and they're all just five bucks each. Get the door. It's race day from Domino's. A total of 14 cars out after this initial caution flag. A lot of drivers involved in two separate incidents. Notably, we've got Rampage, who is one of the best on this type of racetrack. Brad Stover, the current points leader. A few winners as well, Reese Butcher and Stuart Gradden. Green flag flies once again. We are on lap number eight. Robert Harrison wins the battle off pit lane. John Arndt, who came in at the lead at the time, is still in second place. However, Noah Ponser immediately making a challenge to the inside. With all of those accents, we should see a little bit of a splitting of the pack. A lot of cars are going to be damaged at this point now, but we still should see some competitive drivers end up forming a pack. As you can see, it's a decent chunk, about 20 cars that can still run at a competitive pace. Might just have a few stragglers in the back, one of those being Amethyst Ashley. Somehow she's still running after being airborne in the first of those two incidents. Obviously her car is not going to run as well as it did at the start of the race as she was on the front row, but the fact that she is still competing is pretty impressive. She's going to see what she can do to try to keep gaining points on the field as she will need those to help her advance to the playoffs despite her victory as she's kind of fallen a little bit further back in the standings compared to the rest of the winners. Noah Ponta currently challenging Robert Harrison for the lead. As you see, the pack is starting to form back up. Got about a dozen cars bunched together. Three wide situation now as Jake Baskinger on the inside and Ryan Maiden trying to challenge him as well. See the other JR as I believe he had contact from that first incident, but he is still running at a competitive pace and he is doing just fine for himself trying to get back into the top 10. And finding the inside line is working very well for him. He's trying to help his teammate on that inside line, Jack Porkins, make his way to the front. Porkins has had a little bit of an up and down season, but currently eighth place in the points. He's been making good gains as of late and he's really putting himself in a position that he could contend for an open spot in the points and to get into the playoffs if he cannot get a win before then. 
the moment. He's currently in a four-wide situation. Might turn into a three-wide as he battles Jake Baskinger for a lead spot. The crowd behind him still continuing to shuffle. On board Johnny Gardner with the hot seat. Cockpit cam. And see just how tr much traffic is a driver is going to have to deal with. Gardner currently behind Jet Krause. Trying to help that line move forward. But the inside line's got more help at the moment. The 98 starting to make a four wide challenge for the lead. And it looks like as they get through this turn, he might be able to get it. However, Jacob Rose is going to try to force his way into the conversation. And the 98 goes up toward his teammate, try to get his line. We still see Jacob Rose and now William Brock, the pole sitter, battling back to the inside as this pack refuses to give up on any competition. Rose is battling really tight to that 98 car, trying to get some side draft, help him get the drag back on the outside line and push him forward. Rose is in his first career Elite Cup Series start. He's made a few attempts this season, none of them resulting in a race start. However, he was able to find his way in in the 95 car. We'll see how he does later this race. Back in a moment. So, Mobile One Annual Protection protects for 20,000 miles? Yes, it's been proven. Yeah, and it works in any vehicle. Yes. That's, that's awesome. And so are you. No, seriously, I think you're a good person. I respect you. You're my best friend. I want to hang out more. I'm sorry. 20,000 miles between oil changes guaranteed. Mobile One Annual Protection. Available at these locations. The 64 car of NASCAR Fan 19 had to lead that lap, and now you can see he's on the outside line with very little help as the rest of the field trying to challenge him for the spot, try to get a bonus point. A little bit surprised that the 64 actually found his way back up to the front because we saw him get involved in that second accident. Looks like drivers that might have had some incident are still running pretty well. I believe the 76 got run into from the back by Cody Hagen. He's still up here in this front pack, so it looks like anyone that had damage from the accident, they still have a chance. But some of them obviously aren't going to be up to speed as they might be. Johnny Gardner now solely out in front by a wide margin over the rest of the field. You should see this pack catch back up to him. Can see he's starting to put a few car lanes on the rest of the field and now we have green flag pit stops happening right here Aiden Shepard might have separated the field a little bit but he is ducking down the pit lane takes Baskinger right with him so after about seven or eight laps of a green flag stint green flag pit stops taking place Shepard going for two right side tires, basking her for two lefts. So a little bit of a split strategy there. But it looks like to be a two tire stop for both of them as they're both going to pull off and try to help themselves out with draft. That's probably, they were pretty close on pit lane, so I'm sure they were trying to strategize how they can work to get back into a draft. Now we're going to see a bigger pack come down for green flag stops this time. This one led by Jack Kraus and Johnny Gardner. Gardner had a solid lead brewing there, but he's going to have to take service eventually, so he'll take it with a large amount of cars that can help him get back into a draft. It's going to be a two-tire right side call for Gardner. They're going to make sure the tank is filled while also trying to make adjustments to the car. Although it looks like it's a little bit of a slow stop for Gardner.
And it, I feel like I'm starting to see cars that have come in behind him as now he's pulling away, but it seems like a slow stop for Gardner in what seemed like a race, potential race winning car. We'll see what kind of impact that has later on in the race. Now here comes Jack Porkins in first stop. Has a big opportunity to make up some points, at least on Stover. John Arn is still a bit in the conversation, running with that lead pack. With these green flag pit stops, the packs might start to separate. We might see different packs throughout the field. Robert Harrison goes by. And a little bit of drama on the racetrack is a few drivers that have stayed out. They've stayed out too long, and they're out of gas. Looked like Jacob Rose, Kenny Knox, and Philip Fry are a part of that. As they're now limping on the apron of the racetrack. Jacob Rose is going to make it safely back. Not sure if Mundinger ran out, but he's also on pit lane. So a few guys really stretching their laps out here. I don't know how long the pit window is or how it's going to affect how they're able to get to the end of the race. But some might have been pushing their strategy just a little too far. That being said, it looks like they had the speed enough to make it back to pit lane. As Jacob Rose and Mundinger are now starting to pull away. The 76 car, though, is having a little bit of a slower pace on his way to pit lane. Fortunately, though, he was in the back of the field for qualifying. So that means his stall is going to be pretty close to the entry of pit lane. So not a lot of distance to travel. You can see right there, he's the, la he's the first pit stall at the entry. He's going to be able to get back there, get his tire change, and fill up the tank. But a lot of lost time there. The last thing you want on a super speedway especially if there's not going to be any more cautions. You don't know if there will be. But better to keep yourself in a pack. Seems like he's going to have problems with that now as we see a lead pack starting to form here. Robert Harrison, Jet Krause, a part of that one, as well as Aiden Shepard, John Arndt, and Jake Baskinger. They make up the top five, and Mitchell Mark falls just behind. So a six-car breakaway now, trying to lead the field. And of all the drivers up front, none of them have a victory so far this season. John Arndt's the only veteran, and he doesn't have a victory in his career. Could this be the day for him? We will find out here at Bump Draft and Super Speedway. Kyle Busch! Let's do this! Let's do this! That's how you do a donut. They want you to come to the conference room. Jack! Jack, come to the conference room. Okay. What would you do with your favorite driver? Enter your design at toyotaracing.com. We've hit the halfway point of the bump draft in 400, and Robert Harrison currently leading the way. Harrison didn't have a great run at this racetrack in the Amateur Cup Series race, but he still has the points to get into the top 14 in standings and attempt to qualify, and he's having a great day right now. Running up here with this lead pack, trying to see if he can snag away a victory. He's got a few full-timer competitors though, and they have really got to get into competitive mode. Lock down a victory, get into the playoffs. That's what all of these drivers here in this pack are looking for, with the exception of Harrison. You see Baskinger making his way to the inside of Jet Krause and John Arndt who we would assume would take over the points lead if he's able to maintain his position with Stover being out of the race now. But Arndt wants a victory more than anything in the world. And at the moment, he's in a position to take that chance, 
He's just got to execute perfectly and hope that his team's got him on the right strategy. We'll take a look at this flyby cam and you'll see how this, the packs have separated. Here is another six or seven car breakaway as, and then Jacob Rose out there on his own. You can see here there's another five cars. I saw Philip Fry and Mundinger are part of that. I'm sure those are guys that had run out of fuel. That was Rambo, Cars, and Gardner. So a lot of different packs forming here in the mid part of the field. There was that second group we talked about, Ponser, Carranza, Markel. Jack Porkins, Caesar, and Craig Martin all a part of that one. So they're all trying to get into a draft, make their way back up to that pack that's kind of shuffling all over. They've got, just got to get organized. Will Ponser had a great run at 8 Bull a few races ago, finished 6th there. So he's capable of a good super speedway finish, and he's currently about to get close to that mark as he's currently run 7th. Back to that front pack, Robert Harrison still leading the way, leaving a lot of laps in this one. Could potentially take away a bonus point for leading the most laps on the race even though he's not competing for a championship in this series. Jack Krause has had one of the most up and down seasons so far as he's only been able to put together top 10 runs if he isn't crashing out. He finished eighth at Van Zandt. That was a big turnaround from his five DNFs in a row. Had a great run running with the pack as we see Aiden Shepard's going to break away from the lead pack and go down for a pit stop. Shepard's been kind of mid-pack, a little bit of strength up toward the front, but still looking for some consistency. And he's trying to kind of run his own strategy. He takes two left side tires, going to fill up the tank. Did not come down with the 84 car this time, though, so how he gets back in this draft is going to be something to see. Now we see Jack Krause and Mitchell Mark come down. 84 still hasn't come down, so he's really stretching this tank of fuel. Mitchell Mark has put together an impressive run or two in the past couple weeks. And he and Kraus will both take two left side tires and a tank of fuel. We will see them pull off together, so they might be able to work together. NASCAR Fan 19, Gerard Run, Fitzwater Sr. all coming down pretty much at the same time. AJ Jones also on pit lane. Someone else in the back, I believe that is, uh, that would be Amethyst Ashley, who's been off the pace. And now we see that's Baskinger and John Arndt coming together. Robert Harrison still on the track. And he's, he's a loner out there at the moment as Markel and Ponser still remain on the track but they are in the pack behind Harrison. Aren't now taking his service as we see more and more cars come down on pit lane for what could be the final stop of the night, but we are not sure. Based on the laps they've been running, they're going to be cutting it pretty tight if they're trying to make it all the way. Arn is kind of slow on pit lane, and now he finally pulls off. He came down as the exact same time as the 84, but you can see Baskinger is already pulling off. Aren't still halfway down pit lane. Now we see Markel, Porkins, and Ponser come down together as Harrison still remains on track. Oh, and a little contact there from Porkins to Markel as it looks like there's a little bit of a brake check there. Markel's had a terrible season so far, much like Stephen Willey, but he has a real good chance to capitalize on this race based on his position. You can remember back to season one, he didn't earn a top five until the final race of the season at Hula Hoop. Now he's once again missing that mark, but he has a good chance here tonight. We now see Kenny Knox pulling in. He won an Elite Cup Series race earlier this season. Still lacking an Amateur Cup Series race win, though. 
despite the fact that he is in a points position to get into the playoffs. Jubio Caesar coming down. You can see Robert Harrison in the back there. He has finally come down for service. And he is done with that. He took two tires. Not sure what side at the moment, but obviously the tank is filled. And he is pitting so late that it seems like he has a good shot to make it to the end. And I don't know how the other guys are going to fare. Let's see Julius Caesar pulling off. Jacob Rose out on the track alone. I think he's going to take a service here. There we go. Caesar currently marked as the leader of the race. So I imagine he came down just behind Harrison, but obviously the zero car had a stall that was past the start-finish line while Harrison had to pit further down pit lane for the entry. Rose is going for two left side tires on this stop and he will fill it up. I believe at the moment it's going to be Jet Krause and Mitchell Mark that take over the lead. Those two cars that came down together looking to find some strength. One of them is going to look for a victory tonight at Bump Drafted. Today we're going to talk about drag. And that can slow an object down. So in NASCAR, is this good or bad? Layla? Bad, because when you go slow, you lose. You lose? Sponsors disappear. No one will talk to you. All of a sudden, your jokes aren't funny. But when you go fast, you win, and you feel happy. Plus, your parents take you out for ice cream. You had me down, and you brought me right back up. To the bus, I'm driving, we're getting some ice cream. NASCAR Acceleration Nation, where kids can play games and learn math and science the NASCAR way. Go to accelerationnation.com to get started today. We are with you to the end of this one. Jet Kraus and Mitchell Mark currently leading the way. Kraus has been looking for a victory to go along with his several top 10s this season. Mitchell Mark doesn't have any flashy numbers, only one top 10. But he's got a real opportunity to win this race. However, we've got to keep an eye on fuel strategy. These guys came down semi-early. We don't know who can make it and who can't. But we are going to find out in these next eight or so laps because that is how long we have left in this race. Jake Baskin, you're coming up on Amethyst Ashley, who's running slow at the moment. And Robert Harrison, you're going to get a great run on the outside. As you can see, those two drivers are running in a pack along with Tyler Markell. So in a pack that Harrison and Baskinger were in together, Markell was in the pack behind them before this uh, latest pit stop. Now the 48 car is part of this conversation. Meanwhile, John Arn and Philip Fry running a little bit further back from any competitive spot at the moment aren't looking for a victory. Fry has one coming from 8 Bowl. But they are working together in the draft at the moment, trying to see what they can do to catch back up with some drivers. We're looking at the hot seat of Johnny Gardner, and he's not having the greatest of performances today. And that slow pit stop on the first green flag stop really did cost him. And he's just trying to work with the drivers he can, which is currently the 64, the 98, and the 76. They're trying to make that draft work. He's 76 looking to the inside, but not getting the, getting the side draft that he needs. Competition all over the place. Points always going to matter. They're going for every position possible. Jack Krause and Mitchell Mark pass under our camera. You can see there's the next set of cars. She Shepard and Porkins are also part of the conversation. They are also in, in that front pack that trails the 34 and the 5. But 
you did get a good idea of where some of the drivers are in the field and how far back they run. Cross now coming up to Fitzwater Sr., who kind of lost his pace after he slapped the wall from the second of the two incidents on the first caution. And Aiden Shepard is coming down pit lane. That is five laps shy of the checkered flag. And he was one of the first cars to come to pit lane. So it looks like they were running a bit short. And it's not going to be a tire change for the 17. It's fuel only for Aiden Shepard. As he's just trying to get to the end of this race. But really a chance at a good finish. Going out the window unless the majority of the field comes down as well. And here comes Jack Krause and Mitchell Mark. They're coming from the lead. They are not going to have enough gas. Now the question is, is anyone going to have enough gas? So they're both down. Meanwhile, the pack that was just behind them stays out on the racetrack. Baskinger to the lead. Followed by Harrison, Markell, and Porkins. As now the 34 and the 5 go away from their pit stalls. They're going to be able to work together, but they are not going to have a shot at this one as long as someone stays on the track. Four-car breakaway now. Who's going to be the next one to make a move to pit lane? And the 48 goes high as the 84 goes low. Baskinger down to pit lane. And he's coming up hot on Fitzwater Sr. and Jones. So Baskinger is not going to have a shot at this one now. Still looking for a solid finish though. An opportunity here to get some points if he can. Tyler Markell, no career victories, one career top five. This is a potential opportunity for him. But does he have the gas to make it there? Jack Porkins needs a good finish. He could lock himself in and not have to worry about points. Robert Harrison's just running this to get the experience. And he could just take a victory right here in one of his first few races of the series. We see a scatter of cars still coming down the pit lane. Ponser's coming down now. Harrison made a move to the inside of Markell and Porkins is still in third place. William Brock's also coming down the pit lane. So a number of cars are not going to make it to the end. But the lead pack of three cars are still on the racetrack. Harrison leads the way. Tyler Markell is just trailing. There's Jack Krause and Mitchell Mark. You can see they lost a ton of spots. But meanwhile, the three-car trio out in front. They're coming to the white flag here. Robert Harrison leading the way at the moment. Do Markell or Porkins have the draft to make a move? They're staying single file right now. William Brock's coming back on the racetrack from his pit stop. He's going to hold them up a little bit. Markel looking inside. Now looking outside. Not sure if that's the advisable move. Unless he can come down the racetrack and get the speed. But he's not doing that. He's staying high. Coming out at turn number four. It's not going to be a full-timer that gets the victory tonight. It's a part-timer. Robert Harrison takes the victory at bump draft in Super Speedway. For the third time this season, a part-timer from the Amateur Cup Series wins an Elite Cup Series race. And just like Kenny Knox, he gets his first career victory in the Elite Cup Series before he wins one in the Amateur Cup Series. That is a huge day for Robert Harrison and a huge momentum booster heading back to the series where he's going for a championship, looking to see if he can get himself there into the playoffs. So a victorious day for Robert Harrison as he brings the 75 team to a victory. A heartbreaking defeat for Tyler Markell, 
but a huge day for the team just in general, and that is Markel's best finish in his career. Jack Corkins is going to come home third, but still a great result for a driver looking to get himself into the playoffs. Julio Cesar would be able to come home fourth, and Jacob Rose, who really stretched out his fuel on the first stint, got himself to a top five run in his Elite Cup Series debut. You can see despite the ground that they lost on the track, the spots actually lost were not that huge. Jack Krause and Mitchell Mark still come home the top 10 runs. A few other drivers that ended up pitting late like Jake Baskinger and Aiden Shepard would end up finishing just outside the top 10. Only 13 cars end up finishing on the lead lap. William Brock got passed up late in that one. The first car lapped down. John Arndt ends up finishing 17th after it looked like he would have a solid day on the racetrack. The accidents of the lone caution did cause some damage to race cars that stayed on the track, but it turns out not enough to put any of them more than two laps down Amethyst Ashley, the last one out there running on the track. From 29th on down, it's all DNFs from here. Rampage, one of the Super Speedway aces, finishes 31st. The points leader coming into the race, Brad Stover, finishes 32nd. And now the standings will get an update as we see John Arndt does in fact take over the top spot once again, jumps from third to first. Brad Stover with his accident drops the spot as well as Rampage. Jack Porkins now up there in the top five and he is actually going to be the third open spot at the moment with a solid gap over NASCAR Fan 19. You can see how a better finish would have been beneficial for drivers like Baskinger and Shepard who finished just outside the top 10 but they would have really liked to start gaining a little bit more points to get in the top 10 in the standings. And for Amethyst Ashley, you can see why she tried to stay on the racetrack and hope for another caution, although it did not come for her. Currently 18 in points, still good to stay in the playoffs, but she has to be careful not to drop out of the top 25. Jack Krause is going to capitalize on that second straight top 10, pushing him from 31st to 23rd in the point standings. Even if Tyler Markell was able to get the victory today, he would still be in a deep hole and trying to claw for that 25th spot as he is several points down from the next driver up, Gerardo Ron, at least in full-timer standings. So Markell, despite his best efforts, going to end up second place on the day, but a win might not have mattered in terms of getting into the playoffs. And once again, a disastrous day for Stephen Willey as he is now down there in 42nd in points. Looks like he got passed up by Craig Martin today. Here's the chase pitcher as it stands at the moment. We mentioned that Jack Porkins is the third name to get put in green with his fifth place in point spot. NASCAR Fan 19, the next driver who could capitalize on it, as well as Mundinger or Monaco. Jake Baskinger and Aiden Shepard currently just above the cut line, barring any new additions to the top 16. On team standings, Ramco Motorsports still has a good lead over RPG7 Motorsports and Gardner Racing. And in the Rookie of the Year battle, Gradden still with a one-point advantage over Brad Stover. We're going to see, though, who's going to be the one that capitalizes at the end of the season. Jack Borkins makes a huge jump with his finish today and gets to 7th place on the standing chart. So besides a couple big incidents on a single caution period, a relatively tame Super Speedway race today at Bump Drafton. But at the end of the day, fuel strategy came to play, and it was Robert Harrison that played it perfectly. He's headed back to the Amateur Cup Series for another race, and we will be joining the Amateur Cup Series at the same track for our next broadcast, Knox Raceway, as we head to our second and final road course of the season up in Oregon. So for NFR and RVN, my name's Colin Denton. We hope you enjoyed tonight's race, and we hope to see you next time.